So if you recently got the Starlink Gen 3 kit or the Mini, you might have noticed that the Wi-Fi coverage is not so great. Now, before you go on to get another Starlink mesh router or find a Wi-Fi extender or repeater, you need to make sure that this one setting is turned on. Now, out of the box, the Starlink mesh router is running 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal, which is very fast and offers slightly lower latencies, but just like anything, it has its disadvantages. For starters, the Wi-Fi offers a shorter range and the 5 GHz signals struggle to overcome barriers such as walls and furniture, making it only useful if you have direct line of sight access to your router. Now, luckily for us, the Starlink mesh routers also come with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi support. Now, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi isn't as fast as 5 GHz Wi-Fi, but it also has its own advantages. For example, you are able to use it a far distance away from your mesh router and it has the ability to overcome physical barriers like walls and uh, maybe furniture better than 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Now to enable this feature, we simply need to go to the Starlink mobile app. On your phone, go to settings, then make sure router is highlighted. Then under networks, you will see your Wi-Fi name. Click on it, then you need to turn on where it says split 2.4 slash 5 gigahertz networks. When you do that, you're given the option to name your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. In my name, I code it ZTG Starlink Wide. Then I scroll to the bottom and save the settings. When you do that, it will take about 45 seconds for the settings to apply. And when you're successful on your Wi-Fi name, it should indicate that it is split. Now, when you go back to the Wi-Fi list, you should be able to see your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi listed. And you can connect your devices to the new network using the same password as the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now, using my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, I used to get around a 20 meter radius from the router but on the 2.4 GHz network, I can access internet 80 meters away from the Starlink mesh router. Granted, you will not be able to get the best speeds and latencies, but it's very useful, in my opinion. Now, if this doesn't help, I'll show you other methods to improve your network coverage in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, otherwise I'll see you in the next video.